Hey there, it's the real Jason Duncan. I've got a special announcement for you really quick. I am hosting the Exit Lifestyle Conference in Nashville, Tennessee, February 3rd, 4th, and 5th. 2022. You don't want to miss it. Go to theexitlifestyle.com to learn more. At the end of the day, in your business, people will not remember everything you said or did for them, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And so that's one of my driving factors is how do I show up for myself and how do I show up in the world with other people, with friends, with clients, with family, and how do I want to leave them feeling? Yeah, I, I think that piece of advice is so often overlooked and not heard, and I'm glad that you said it because people want people remember how you made them feel. As employees, uh, they're going to stick with you if they feel good. Uh, they may be excellent at their job, they, they, they perform well, but they'll quit if they don't feel appreciated, they don't feel uh, trusted and empowered. And I think as an entrepreneur, we have to remember that. we got to make our employees, our people that we work with, feel a certain way and it's not about touchy feely you know being you know playing that stupid game and the pc you know, all that kind of, <laughs> it's actually being legitimately authentically real with people In today's ultra competitive business world, being a successful entrepreneur or business owner can be very challenging. Fortunately, contemporary times have blessed us with resources for tackling those challenges and getting us to success more quickly than we could have imagined. Welcome to the Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs grow incredible companies. This podcast looks at the five keys to unlocking success as an entrepreneur. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason's mission is to use his gifts of teaching and leadership to help others get the results they want out of life. Join Jason every week and learn the keys to grow a truly successful business. Welcome back to the show. This is The Real Jason Duncan. We're in a brand new location today, brand new recording location, and we've been here for like two hours trying to figure out how to get this thing set up. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I want to say thank you for tuning in. We actually, what's funny is we have more views of this show and, and uh, people are consuming it more on YouTube than anywhere else. So you got to go to YouTube, go to my YouTube channel. The, uh, it's the, You can just search for The Real Jason Duncan, but it's youtube.com slash The Real Jason Duncan. You can listen to the show right there. And of course, we're on every podcast player. We're happy to be syndicated through the C-Suite Radio Network. Big shout out to those guys for helping us get out to all the podcast players. And thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I know I run into people every once in a while that say, oh yeah, I listen to your show. And it makes me feel really good that I'm delivering good quality content to entrepreneurs just like you so that you can learn how to be more successful. Because that's what the show is all about, the root of all success. And I've got a fantastic guest who's flown in all the way from Maryland to be with me today on the show and has been so gracious and patient with me because we were supposed to record at the standard today just like we normally do here in Nashville, but there was a problem with the location and so we had to make it a last minute adjustment. And so we're actually now uh, today in uh, one of the companies I own in Hendersonville, Tennessee, uh, energy lighting services were in their training room. And so we've been here for a couple hours trying to figure out how to set things up, <laughs> how to get the lighting right, how to get the audio. And uh, Rebecca has been so kind to be patient <laughs> waiting for us. We got started a little bit late, but you as a listener in your car or walking your dog, whatever it is you're doing, you don't care about that stuff. So let me go ahead and introduce uh, Rebecca. Rebecca Satori, um, we got connected through Instagram, through a mutual connection. And that's why I love Instagram. I, I, if you're not on Instagram, you go, go follow me at the real Jason Duncan and Rebecca will give her her handle. You can follow her, talk to her. But we got connected. We don't know each other from Adam. Like we've never met before, but we start, you know, conversations. I'm following her. She's following me. And we start creating a relationship through Instagram, like business relationship, collegial coaches working together to make the world a better place. And ultimately I said, hey, why don't you come come to Nashville, be on the show? So she went through the process and, and now she's here. She flew, flew in from Maryland to be here. And last night we met for the first time face to face and kind of caught up. But this lady, I, I really am impressed because what you're gonna find out in the show today when we talk with her, is that she went from being a stay-at-home mom, which is a fantastic, fantastic thing. Like my mom stayed at home with me and my brother our whole uh, you know, childhood growing up, and it was very formative for me. 
And then in uh, about 11 years ago, she made a shift and said, I'm going to go and I'm going to coach other people because she had seen how coaches had changed her life. And so she is now dedicating her life to help coach others. And she's, she's established a pretty successful business, which is why she's here on the show as a successful person. But she is really intuitive. You're going to find that out. She, she kind of sees through the BS that a lot of people don't see through. Um, we shared some great stories last night over a drink and a, uh, she had a glass of wine. I had a, had some rum because that's, that's my favorite. But we had a, a, a conversation about a lot of things that are going on in her life and she is doing fantastic. She's helped some really high level people in the coaching business. She's been doing coaching now for over 11 years. She's helped several companies in the coaching space uh, produce over $5 million in revenue working with them. She does events all over the place. As a matter of fact, she's leaving here to head back to an event in Florida that she's playing with a, with a colleague of hers. And it's just her story of success and how she's persevered through some struggles and trials uh, is, is fantastic. So I'm very happy to welcome to the show Rebecca Satori. So Rebecca, this is great. Yes. I know you had, we had talked pre-show about a lot of the stuff in your background and I said, there's no way I'm going to remember all that <laughs> other than reading off a script because there's so much to say. So first of all, thank you for being here. Thank it's you for an honor me. that you flew in and you're here in Nashville. Well, Hendersonville, which is just yeah. north of Nashville. Uber ride up was okay, I assume, huh? Perfect. And I'm so in love with Nashville. <laughs> it's a great city, isn't it? Yeah. And you've never been here before. Never been here before. So what's the what's the one thing that, you know, being here for the first time in 24, 48 hours, like this is the thing that like the cool thing that you remember? I just love the energy here and people seem to be so open to being so friendly and connected and I just feel the sense of collaboration and I felt like when I was listening to all the music the one night I'm like I could just stay here all night long but I and people do I know they do I saw it was like okay everyone closes at 3 a.m. so well it was funny you know I've lived here my whole life and I'm not much of a honky-tonker I don't do the Broadway thing because that's I mean I guess when you're from a place you don't do the thing like the Grand Ole Opry is here too and I've only been one time and that was within the last five or six years wow when you're local you don't do some of that stuff yeah but I know that Anytime I am driving through Nashville at night, I don't care what day of the week it is, you drive down Broadway towards 2nd Avenue, towards the river, and it's live music and throngs of people everywhere all totally. the time. And I, I take that for granted. So when I go to visit other cities and they don't have live music and people everywhere at night, I'm like, what's this place is dead. <laughs> it's true. It's <laughs> true. I love live music, too. So it's really been enjoyable. And you're from Maryland. Yes. So uh, what part of Maryland do you live in? So I live in uh, like Hunt Valley, Moncton area, which I would say Moncton, but people would say, I don't know where that is. So it's about 40 minutes outside of Baltimore City in the Inner Harbor. So I've been to Baltimore a couple of times. I used to, when I taught school, I talked to you about this last yeah. night. I used to teach eighth grade American history and I would take my students every year to DC. And part of our trip was we'd spend a day at the Harbor in Baltimore doing the pier and all that kind of stuff. And it was, it was that's the only time I've been there. So I haven't really been there, but so, Let's talk about your journey to success because okay. that's what the whole show is about. So <laughs> I want to ask, first of all, how did you get involved in entrepreneurship to begin with? What was the, kind of the genesis of your entry into entrepreneurship? Well, I would say that if everyone takes a look at their life, they can see these pieces that have been put into place where you it just ends up where you are in the moment. And so for me, I have always, I look back over my life and I'm like, every single J-O-B that I've ever had has been on my terms. And so my mindset has always probably been in that space, but I went to college, I got a degree in psychology, and then um, I did marketing for a mortgage company for a while, and then I did sales and Pampered Chef and stuff like that when <laughs> I was a stay-at-home mom for a time period and used to do nails and all of that. So I would call that customer service, merging with marketing, merging with sales, merging with an entrepreneurial mindset. And even when my kids were, or my oldest was really young, I went back into the place I did nails knowing I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but I could work only on Saturdays. And I said, you have an empty station, I'd like to make you money. Because your mindset has to be in what is it that the other person desires or wants when you're trying to sell something, right? Um, so all of those things kind of came together. And then in 2010, I went to a workshop and the woman who was a holistic psychotherapist offered to join a program on how to turn your life purpose into a business. And so I decided this is cheaper than a master's degree and I haven't looked back since. 
So in tw- that was in 2010. Correct. So you went to this, what was it, holistic, what was it? It, it was a, a workshop called Inner Bonding, Breath Work, and Joy. So it was more on personal development stuff. But then she did a special voluntary presentation for you to attend. And she's like, I'm a holistic psychotherapist and I have a coaching program for seven months. I'll turn you, I'll teach you how to turn your life purpose into a business. And so by the end of the seven months, I had sold a VIP day and a first coaching package and, you know, had her mentoring me and kind of going up the ladder, if you will, in the coaching industry. And at that time, I was focused more on personal coaching, like holistic holistic empowerment coach is what I called myself. And my website was called Your Soul Navigator. And then in um, 2011, at the beginning of the year, I was at a retreat in Sedona and a an events coordinator had come up to me. I'd done a speaking presentation to present to my mastermind group. And she's like, you need to be doing business coaching, which essentially business coaching is personal development in large part too. Yeah. Well, you can't, there's no way to separate your personal life and your business. I mean, if people try to do it and they fail miserably at it. And that's why businesses fail because mm-hmm. if your personal life is failing, your business is probably going to be failing as well. So, um, so you went to this conference in 2010, you met this lady and you went to this one thing, this one little session, and completely changed your life. And that was what we talked about, you and I talked about last night. It's like the theme of this show today is probably going to be how a coach can absolutely change your life. You yes. know, you go to one session, completely changes the trajectory of your life. So what was going on that made you even interested in going to that event to begin with? What yeah, was going I, on in well, life? so my sons were three and six at the time. And this is back when teleclasses had been kind sort of popular, I guess. But right before that, it was interesting because right before that, I went to a health event at a running store that I was, um, you know, patronizing or whatever. And there was a guy there who did a presentation and he was a health coach. And then we had a, you know, discovery session or strategy session or whatever. And he tells me, you know, oh, I think you'd be a fit to work with me. And he says, it's going to be $300 a month for this. And I nearly fell off my chair because that was my first introduction to the coaching industry, which I think is hilarious now. Because 300 it's, bucks a month, you can't get a coach. <laughs> if you can get a coach for 300 you don't want that coach. You don't want that coach. <laughs> and so right after that, I hired this other woman who was an International Coaching Federation certified. And I was helping her with some workshops that she was doing out of her house. And then when this workshop in Ocala, Florida opened up for 2010 and said, this is one of those jump off the bridge or jump off the cliff and hope the bridge appears moments. And I really appreciated that. And it's just been incredible to, you know, have the coaching and and see how much your life can skyrocket when you have someone. I mean, if we look at professional athletes and Olympic athletes, they don't they would never go without a, a, a coach. That would be incomprehensible. Yeah, I, I tell you, I, and I, I told you this story, and I, I've told this before on the show, but you know, I hired my first business coach in 2017, and I started the company in 2010. So we're seven years in, and I had wanted to hire a coach previous previous to that that moment, but um, lots of reasons why I didn't. Most. Well, I don't want to get into it, but anyway, I didn't. We didn't hire a coach, and it wasn't necessarily my decision. Let's just put it that way. Um, but, but I at the time had people telling me, "Oh, we're smart enough. We can figure this out on our We can figure." And, and certainly, we were smart. We started the business, created a multi-million dollar business. But when I hired that coach, I'm telling you, man, Rebecca, that's when things completely changed for me. Just like for you, things completely changed for you. So, so you go to the conference. You you go to this this uh, one session changes the way you perceive things, how things are going to go. When was it, when did you decide I'm going to go into coaching? When, was that pretty quick or was it kind of a more of a long-term development? That was really what the program was about, the whole turning your life purpose into a business. So there were a couple of other people in the program that didn't have a coaching business, but primarily it was coaches. So it was like pretty immediate that it was like, okay, start Um, preparing your signature talk for speaking presentations that you can do to get your name out there and then creating packages and your signature system. So there were different modules that the woman was teaching on to really help you get the systems and structures in place that would help you be visible to people and then invite them into an opportunity to work with you and then obviously make your business lucrative. And so doing things in true Rebecca style, I decided to host a workshop called Leading Visionary Women in October of 2010, I guess. 
and I hired an events coordinator. I mean, I went all out. And I've had other coaches that said, I cannot believe that you did that because it ta- it, it's, it's costly to put on an, a live event yes, and hire an events coordinator. And so leading up to this workshop, I was freaking out because I owed all this money. I had all these food and beverage minimums and I, it was open to 30 women and I had like eight people signed up. So I was like trying to mitigate costs at this point. And long story short, I did a back of the room, what we call in the coaching industry, a back of the room pitch, like a, a back end sales offer. And I sold $40,000 in that weekend. With eight people? With eight people. So the conference was a success. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> then we had a lot of extra food left over because there were only You're eight You sending people home with doggy bags. Okay, thanks for coming to the conference. Here's a week's right? worth of food. <laughs> Here's your, your party favor. <laughs> so let me ask you about this. Two things. Number one, you work a lot with women. It seems like that's kind of where your focus is women entrepreneurs. So I want to enter. I think there's an interesting storyline that I want to talk about that. But before we get to that part, the conference, the little, the the uh, the session that you went to was, I will teach you how to take your life's purpose, mm-hmm. turn into a business. Mm-hmm. At that time, did you know what your life purpose was? I had a pretty good idea. I really did. Um, I've always been very intuitive, and I love how the mind works and why people make the choices they make, as opposed to the climates that they're drawn to, or like you and I were talking last night about, I love the beach and you're not necessarily a beach person. person. My (laughs) wife is, I'm not. Therefore I go to the beach. Yeah. (laughs) So we're going to, we're going to go have a lavish picnic on the beach one day, me and your wife. Um, And so I think it's just really interesting and fascinating. And I just love meeting new people all the time and learning about them. And that's essentially what I do with business owners is I, intuitively understand and energetically understand. And then of course we are talking as well. What is their operating system? So we, we each, each of us as human beings have a unique operating system, which is part of what that program was teaching me where it's like, well, what is your life's purpose? So most of the business owners that I work with, they already know what their life's purpose is, but then taking that and intersecting it with how their business operates, which is what I call a healthy business ecosystem. And generally there's a mis- there's a mismatch. So they're not in that, what I would call their sales success sweet spot. Um, so that's one of the things I work with people on. But I, I think at that point, I really did kind of have that self-reflection of, okay, I did marketing, I did customer service, I did psychology, and this coaching thing is kind of converging all of those realms that I was operating in prior and, and bringing it all together. And this feels really good. It feels really on target and like what, what my soul is here to express in the world. How different is what you think your purpose is today versus 2010 when you were at that conference? The interesting thing is not that different. Like I let go of the website, Your Soul Navigator, but I'm really navigating people to their fullest soul expression through their business. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So I know that you, you made a comment, you made a comment, you said, I think most business owners know their purpose. I, I disagree with that. I don't think they do, but that doesn't mean I'm right. Mm-hmm. But wh- why do you say that they, you think they know their purpose? I think everyone intuitively in somewhere knows their purpose. They know I meant to be in customer service or I meant to be the behind the scenes person. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen having run international coaching academies too is There are people who get into entrepreneurship and they are just not meant to be an entrepreneur. It's like they're trying to be a horse and they're meant to be uh, an alligator or something, you know, and that that's a challenge. So it's like I want something or I like the glitz and the glamour of what this looks like or in the coaching industry. I'm sure you've seen people who are like, oh, make ten thousand dollars in a month and it's all baloney. And, you know, they're they fall in love with that instead of falling in love with themselves and falling in love with really getting to know themselves on a true deep level. And so I think somewhere to cert- to certain degrees, and maybe they don't, but when I work with clients, that's something that I can help uncover even more quickly for them to discover. And because until you know that, you don't know how to, I, I call it divinely appointing a player team. So you might have a player team doing X, Y, and Z, or you as the business owner might be doing something because, oh, I can just get it done faster, or this person didn't do it right, so I'll just fix the problem instead of fixing the real problem, which is to get the team member doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing or positioning them differently and finding the right person for the right position in the company. 
So I do believe everyone does have, it, it, if, it, if it's not known, it's right under the surface. What, what do you do to help is. them? Like if you if you did talk to Bob or Sally who mm-hmm. owns a business and they've engaged you as a coach, I need you to help me get the business better. And you find out that they are clueless. Like they are a tall, they're a ball lost in tall weeds, as we say here in the South. What do you, how do you help them figure out their purpose? So delegating is a way, it, people delegating personally and professionally is a really quick way to spotlight where your unique brilliance is. So an exercise I've had clients do over the years is to identify, well, what are you uniquely brilliant at? So I have all of my clients go throughout their life and in their business asking the question or just having the question in the back of their mind, who else could be doing this better? Or how could our company do this in an optimized way? And when you do that, generally your unique brilliance is going to be something that only you can do. So that can be uncovered by looking at, well, what really lights me up? So for me, I don't want to have to worry about technical stuff and um, flyers for events or, you know, anything like that. I want someone else to do it for me. So as you know, I've run several apprentice, apprentice groups of my own. And um, that helps you really like you can almost 100 X the results that you're getting because you're bringing in people who fill in your weak spots, if you will. But then you're where you're not uniquely brilliant at. Generally, that's not going to be an income producing thing. So you want to match up. Well, what is my passion? What is my purpose? What am I uniquely brilliant at? And generally, those are the things that are going to bring uh, the, gr- the greatest amount of of financial abundance. And then you appoint other people, whether it's apprentices, team, employees, subcontractors, whatever, to do those things that you don't like. So you have to pay attention to your energy. Right now, I'm like, this is amazing. This is this is my unique brilliance. I love doing this. I could talk all day. I could teach all day. And so I've built my business in a way that I have team members who do, I have two team members right now working on things while I'm here. So just asking those questions, but I can also intuitively tell certain things. But then if there's any resentment, like, oh, well, you know, this team member didn't do this and then I had to go and do it. And it's like, go fix the problem then. Don't go and do it and be pissed off about it because then you're not in your zone of genius. So when did you make the shift from general business coaching, life coaching, et cetera, to I really want to pour into women specifically. Like when did, was that always part of what you've done or was it more of a, 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 an evolution over time? Yeah, it was very, from the, from the very beginning, it was focused directly on women. And just over the past three months, I've felt really called to work with both men and women alike. And I have worked with men over the years, you know, not as many, of course, but Uh, And I love working with men business owners as well. So lately, I've just going forward into 2022, I'm completely open to working with men and women business owners alike or even husband and wife teams because there's a lot of husband and wife teams out there. And having coached women for so long and run events for specifically women, um, I've noticed that sometimes the men get left behind and the woman will go home and has this like you know, all opening experience and like has catapulted into her next level of success. And a lot of women can outgrow their men as a result of that. And I really believe we're headed into a more of a collaborative space going forward. So you you talked uh, when we spoke last night about some of the higher end coaches that would be more well known that you've actually worked one on one with over the last 10 years. Do you care to share any of those stories? Because I thought some of those stories you shared were pretty cool to kind of go back to the theme that a coach can change your life. Are there any more of those stories that you would you could share with me and the listeners about? Yeah, absolutely. And this is the interesting thing. You would think when you see a business that's at like a four million or a five million dollar revenue, what I've uncovered is behind the closed doors, it's generally a wreck. <laughs> and I'm always I'm always looking, my mind works such that I'm always looking for how to optimize things. Like how do you optimize your personal development? How do you optimize the business and how the systems and structures are working? And so one of the, one of the massive changes for me was in 2013, I had been brought on as an apprentice and it was one of the most life transformative experiences ever in a very short period of time. And so when I went to this retreat that we were supposed to go to in Santa Barbara, I had no money in the bank. My business was still relatively new and I was a self-startup business. I 
always say I had two dimes to rub together when I started my business in 2010. And uh, I even taught myself HTML code. Like I, my website fell apart, the web guy disappeared, I had no money left in the bank for anything, so I would stay up and learn HTML code from YouTube and then get up in the morning, put a hat on, and take my kids to preschool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got it. So, so I in can 2013, see that. So, so, so I think the good news is, is that I have done so much in the business and I really am crystal clear on what I do not like and what I absolutely love. And it's what I do not like, I'll let other people do, and then I do what I absolutely love, for the most part. And so then in 2013, when I had this, exper this opportunity for this apprenticeship program, I was like, this is a non-negotiable, I have to be here. This is, I could feel it. I could feel that it was gonna be like a night and day kind of evolution, quant quantum leap, whatever you wanna call it. And so fortunately I had a client I was working with and she decided to buy a $2,500 VIP day package. And I was like, oh phew, cause that's like as, almost exactly as much as I needed to get myself to Santa Barbara. I rented a black Mustang convertible to drive up the coast because I was like, I've never been to California before, and this is the dream that I had in my mind about when I got to California. <laughs> you gotta do it. Gotta do it. It was a big stretch for me, though. It was a really big stretch. And um, so we had a four-day retreat with, in this woman's home, and she brought us on to create content for an international coaching academy and just organize all the modules and do some marketing and stuff like that. And my life dramatically changed in just one year. A year later, I had bought my own Mustang convertible and I hired a personal chef. And that was when I really started expanding how much I was delegating to people. And I just, my business took off. I mean, everything just, tr I tripled my income. I broke into six figures. It was just like the coolest thing ever. It was just like this rocket ship moment. And so working behind the scenes with that husband and wife team was really profound in so many ways. And it really stretched me and grew me because, again, this is someone who's operating at a multi seven figure level. And people at that level, they don't take your bullshit. And so there were times where we would be on calls and I was going through a really difficult, you know, divorce situation at that time with my kids. They were three and or however they they were seven and ten at that point. And I remember one time I had to go pick up my kids. I'm a single mom. And I and I and Gina appointed me to be the note taker on the call. And I said, I can't. I have to go pick up my kids from wherever. And she says, you know what, Rebecca, I'm really sick and tired of hearing about your business drama and the problems you're having with your children. And most people would think, man, that is rude. <laughs> and to a certain degree it is. But it literally catapulted me up into this place of no more complaining. And I'm not saying I never complained again, for sure. <laughs> but it just had me operating at a higher level where it was like, if I want to go to this level, I have to be willing to have no excuses and make, make things happen at a whole different level. So that was one experience. And then if you want me to yeah, share so you Yeah, so you're working with a husband and wife coaching team as an apprentice, helping them build. And, and the things you learned through that process kind of catapult you to a whole nother level. Was there another coach that you can look at? And you're like, this, this person or this experience with a coach took me even to another, another place. Because I think you were talking about that last night. Yeah, I, so the story I was going to share was different, but, um, th th so I worked for another guy and, it, and he and his wife. So that was interesting because the first person, the woman was kind of in the spotlight and the husband was more behind the scenes. And then the second, the, another person that I worked with, um, took, he, he was in the spotlight and his wife was more so in the background. But with them, I, I was creating a lot of systems and structures and doing sales for them. And one of the things that I created was this 40 page document of objection handling. And so any of the salespeople in the team could basically go in and if the person had this uh, ex excuse or objection, whatever you want to call it, oh, I'm already in a coaching program, I already have a coach, then you could hit command F and go multiple coaches and get taken right to the document. Not that you were reading from the script, but that it would help you during the sales process. So they had their behind the scenes really well put together and they operated from a super high level of integrity. The other company that I was working for, it was pretty much a mess behind the scenes and they weren't operating from the highest level of integrity. So I, I really did get to see what do I want and what do I not want? And then 
just doing sales. So I've also done sales for a lot of different companies too. And then I was telling you about that event in Texas. Mm -hmm. But I learned from that experience that I will never do sales for someone unless they're receiving sales coaching and sales pitching from me. Because if you don't pitch from the stage the way that you need to, then my world ends up being a mess. Yeah. You've got in your platform that you teach, you've got four pillars of success that you talk about. Could you, do you mind going into those four yeah, pillars? Yeah, absolutely. So one of them is team, you know, divinely appointed a player team. And so what I talk about is your healthy business ecosystem. So to me, it's about how is your operating system and how does it intersect? Like, how do you uniquely work? Some people are more um, methodical. And for me, I'm not. I, I'm, I've struggled with consistency in my business. That's been my biggest challenge, probably, because I'm like, I'm in Nashville. I want to go shopping or, I wanna, you know, I want to go to Music Row or something like that. And so I have to have that kind of flexibility. But I have other people who do better with this, like, routine that it's the same every day. I do not operate that way. So there's a, a guy who wrote a book about ADD and ADHD. And it's interesting because I was reading it and he talks about you're either the farmer or the hunter. And the hunter is like over here and then over here and then over here. The farmer is more methodical. And I'm reading this and I'm like, this is this is the entrepreneur. Like the entrepreneur is the hunter. <laughs> it's not about ADHD or ADD. It's really about you know, knowing what kind of an entrepreneur you are and then operating from there so that you can intersect that with your business success. So obviously sales is part of your, your healthy business ecosystem. And a lot of people still struggle with sales. I love sales and I've always loved sales because to me, all sales is, is about getting to the truth. It's about the person getting radically honest with themselves about where they are in their business and in their life right now. And then what is it that's not working for them and how much is it costing them that this stuff isn't working, whatever that stuff might be? And then looking at what is it that they desire and what is that worth to them? And on a sales call or a sales meeting, if you can be radically honest and in, and in integrity with them on that particular navigation where you're really getting to the truth of what what is it costing them to be where they are and what is it worth to them to get to where they want to go? And if your product or service is a match for them, that all that is is getting to the truth. And you're never out of integrity. You're never the slimy salesperson. So that's the one pillar. The other pillar is the A player, divinely appointed team. So looking at that in your healthy business ecosystem. And some people just, usually people tend to think that it's a major thing that needs to change in order for them to skyrocket to their next level of success. It's not. It's all these little micro things. So you're just tweaking all these little micro things. The other one is being in integrity, and that's about being in integrity with yourself. And most people don't think about this, but I've found in my many years of coaching all these people all over the globe, is the integrity piece is really about how do you speak to yourself and what are the stories that you're telling yourself? So if you're chronically judging yourself, criticizing yourself, beating yourself up, um, making yourself wrong, that that's not going to ever be an energetic match for you getting to the next level of success. And a lot of times that's what holds people back. I'd say about 80 percent of the time it's about being impeccable with your word and honoring yourself and the people around you, regardless of the consequences. So you got team. So you mentioned team, sales, integrity, and what's the fourth pillar? The fourth pillar is your profit margin. Okay. Got to make money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when so success, this show is actually about success, right? The root of all success. So I would be interested to know how you define that term. What what does Rebecca Satori? How does she define success? I love this question because it's different for every person. It is. And so. One of my taglines is live a rich life from the inside out. And so I believe that your go-to place first is to fill yourself up and have a connection and a relationship with the creator and loving yourself and constantly looking for places of where can I love myself more so that I am pouring out from the inside with joy and bliss and happiness and 
you know, going on adventures and experiences is something that really fills me up too. So looking at, well, what really fills me up? And then I can pour out to the people around me and having successful relationships, having successful communication and having the kind of money in the bank that allows me to have the freedom to do what I want just like you do. So with that as a definition, are you a successful person? I certainly am. <laughs> well, I love to dig into that. And I love, you're right. You're so right. Because every time I have somebody sitting across the chair from me on this show or Zoom, if I do them on Zoom, I ask the same question, what's your definition of success? And, and every one of them are different. They're all themed about the same because the successful people all look in the same direction. What's, what's interesting to me is that in all of my interviews over the years, whether formally through the podcast or otherwise, when I ask very successful people about how they got there, I find that there are these five things, these keys that they use to unlock success. And it's the same for everybody. I, I, it, I, it's, it's really weird how it shows up every single time. So I want to run through those kind of as we, as we continue our conversation. And I want to go through them one at a time and ask what you're, how you think this key unlocks success for you. The first is passion. You've already used that word a couple of times in our conversation today. And so there's two sides of passion, though. There's the emotional side of passion. You love it. You like it. It's energetic. You love, I mean, it's, it's, it's life-giving. But the other side of passion is mental. It's, it's I'm willing to endure. That's actually what the word passion means, is willing to endure. So have you seen or how have you seen passion your passion play into your success and maybe the success of other people. Right? Yeah, absolutely. For me, I think I always say that the fastest path of transformation is through immersion because of my experience in Santa Barbara back in 2013. It just dramatically changed. You, you don't know what you don't know until you're around other really successful people and being immersed to that level of exposure is something that is super powerful. So for me, my passion tends to come from seeing women and men at this point <laughs> change, dramatically change their lives. There's nothing that brings me greater joy. And that comes first to me. The, the money, making money is like a side effect. And so watching someone dramatically change their life and living according to what I would call their divine nature, which is joy and bliss and happiness and fulfillment and pouring out into other people's lives through their unique purpose. There's nothing that brings me greater joy. Uh, I love that. I love that. Well, the other the next two keys that I talk about kind of go together. Um, so I'll talk about them at the same time. And one is right place, right time. And another one's knowing the right people. So when I have interviewed people like you who are very successful at their craft, whether it's in your business or, or you know, in another, any kind of other business, I can always ask people, hey, well, where were you? Like, what place in time were you did this happen? And for you, it sounds like being at that event, maybe it, maybe the divorce was a, a, a catapult moment for you or what was going on in your personal life, but but that put you in a place in time where you're like, I got to do something different. And that, that session, that one session changed everything for you. It sounds like that's the place in time, but then people are also. And you, we've, we've illustrated through your story, all these coaches and these different people have come into your life. So that's the way I see your story, but how do you see right place, right time, and right people contributing to your success? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, that was definitely a life-changing point in my journey. And it's interesting because I had never been financially independent at that point in my life. And I was walking down the streets of Paris because I was in Paris for 10 days with this coach and her husband and the other apprentices working on all of this material. And I had to turn my GPS on to find my hotel back from her apartment. And I got a text in from my ex-husband at the time. And he says, I'm moving out on such and such date. And it was like a gut punch to me because I was like, oh my gosh, this is really real. Mm. And I had a coming to God moment where I was like, hey, God, here's the deal. I'm not moving my kids out of the house they grew up in. And I need at least $10,000 a month coming in every single month. And I was really terrified, really and truly. And so I talk about conviction a lot. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, you have to harness artificial conviction because you don't have this moment. You don't have a oh, holy crap moment like, like I had when I was in Paris then. But that energy and that conviction harnessed me forward in that way. And so right place, right time, you know, I think you manifest those too, and that yes. you have these divine appointments. And so I, I believe in soul contracts too. 
So I believe that people come in and out of your lives at certain reasons and certain seasons to help evolve your soul in life. And so I think everything and everyone is right person, right time, but you can kind of drive the boat or change the rudder, if you will, you know, the direction by setting an intention. So setting an intention for really getting outside of your comfort zone, because that's where all growth happens. Yeah. Well, I, and, and I think what you pointed out there is so true, because I, I know a lot of times when I talk about what, when I talk of people wh who have um, the, the mentality of scarcity or victim mentality, or they envy uh, in a negative way, rich, whatever they decide to decide rich people or mm -hmm. successful people. Well, they, they were just lucky. Oh, well, well, hold on a second. Uh, luck certainly plays a part. I, I get it. I like there are things that happen we had no control over and we, we happen to be right place, right time. However, what I found, and I think you, you illustrate this better than anybody else, is that you put yourself, you get in the, you got on the airplane, you flew to Santa Barbara, you got, you rented that car, you went to that place, you did this, you, you put yourself in these places to me. You didn't just stay in your house as a stay at home mom and, and stay in the kitchen and like, oh, I'm waiting for success to show up. I'm going to wait for the lucky people to hit me over the head with a lucky stick. No, this is success isn't about being lucky. Success is about making your own luck because I find the harder you work, the luckier you get. You agree with that? I do agree with that. I, I don't know about the luck part. I think I see it as blessings. I, I, I don't know. That word is always just like, uh, to me, it means something different than I think may, maybe what you're saying it as. But it's like, that's the whole staying at home and waiting for success to fall into your lap. And yeah. so, it, you know, I think we're in a time in entrepreneurship right now where I've been talking a lot about your ROV and it's called radical responsibility, outrageous ownership and volunteers, not victims. Whoa, that's a lot. Yes. So, so break that down, break that down. Well, I, my life dramatically changed talking about also right time, right place, right people. You know, it's, it's not just the people that come in to your life as a mentor or a coach or somebody that's like, oh, yeah, you feel good. It's a lot of times what I would call a noble adversary. And for me, my ex-husband was a noble adversary. And we went through some very, very challenging times in our marriage. And we had a huge, huge blow up in 2008 when my um, or 2007 when my sons were four and one. And I growing up played the role of the victim a lot because my sister was bulimic. And it was like, that's how I was able to get my parents' attention. And so I was able to examine that and through self-reflection. And so when this situation happened with my ex-husband in 2007, I was like, you know, he, he, he did this and he did that. And, you know, I was still playing the chronic role of the victim. And I heard a voice say, what was it that he did to you that was so horrible? And I'm an adopted person, so of course I have the, the wounds of betrayal, abandonment, and rejection growing up. And of course those things came up. And then I heard a voice say to me, where are you abandoning and rejecting yourself? And so the next couple of years was really intense work on me being there for myself and not rejecting myself, betraying myself or abandoning myself and not playing the role of the victim anymore to get something because that's a form of manipulation. Wow. Th isn't that weird though that, that the victim mentality strikes so many people and they use it to manipulate themselves into worse situations. Is totally. it? It's so, I don't understand like how we can go through what we've gone through in this world over the last tw two years, 18 months and people come out victors and some people come out victims. And I think Absolutely. it's mainly mindset. It's like, what are you gonna do? You, you had a choice. I mean, you're going mm -hmm. through a terrible relationship issue with your husband, your ex-husband, and you're having to make a decision. You weren't financially independent. And, and a lot of wives, stay-at-home moms, find themselves in that position, good or bad. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then if things change, they've gotta make a decision. Yeah. Am I the victim of my circumstance or am I gonna be a victor? Am mm -hmm. I gonna go for it? And I think that's where the right place, right time, putting yourself in places where you can meet the right people. Mm -hmm. now, let me talk about the last two keys uh, uh, is preparation and plan. So the reason I think these show up in everybody's stories is because it is not likely, if not impossible, to be, success, to be successful at something you are prepared for. For example, um, the people who are successful in the biochemical engineering space 
were prepared for that because they know stuff I don't know. The people who are successful in developing electric cars like Elon Musk or whatever, they, they were prepared for that. You, me, we couldn't do that. Now, I don't want to assume too much, but I'm going to make the assumption you and I couldn't do that. So preparation is that thing. You have to have the know-how to pull it off. The second and the fifth key is plan, like the ability to get the financial resources to, to, to be successful. So how did preparation and plan play into Rebecca's story of success? I'm smiling because I have a... Yeah, you got to watch this. You got to go to YouTube. You got to watch, you got to watch this. <laughs> oh my gosh. So a woman that I'm still in contact with who was in the very first coaching program that I was in in 2010, she's actually a divorce coach and she has a, a bunch of multiple streams of revenue and has a real estate company and a building company and all that too. But she said to me one time, and I never, you know, this is the beautiful thing about being around other people because they reflect back to you things you might not see about yourself. And she says to me, she goes, Rebecca, you are the only person I've ever met in my entire life who does not have a plan B. And I never even thought of that before. So I think when you set out for an outcome that yes, you have to be flexible, otherwise, otherwise life will teach you very quickly. <laughs> um, but I just, I really have just, I have a vision and I go for it. And I'm not a huge planner either. So I do rely on my team for some of that stuff. Like I'll just get an idea. Like I sat in meditation years after I was one of the apprentices and I had this whole download that was just like start an apprenticeship, you know, create your own school of feminine fortune. And I literally like did a video and put it out there. And within like, I think three days, I had seven apprentices that I had, you know, brought on board. And then in seven months, we created eight different courses through the school of feminine fortune. It was just like, wow, this is incredible. So I don't really sit, I mean, I sit down and map things out or I'll do like VIP intensives with my coaches too, to kind of get a general idea of like where are things going next. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when I take the time to plan like that, it doesn't end up working. I was going to launch an apprenticeship this fall and then other things happened. And now I'm going in a different direction. And I've got a bunch of live uh, upcoming live events that are happening. So it's all still good things, but the planning is not, not the, you know, I have a general idea, but meticulously planning it out and, and doing a business plan like, Oh, yeah. That's well, not inspiring to what's me. funny is that out of the people that I've interviewed on the show and also casually off the show about their level of success and how they got there, a uh, plan always plays into it from a financial standpoint. There was a plan to have the finances to to support whatever it was you're going to do. But business plans, I think less than thir less than a third right. of the people I talked to had a written business plan. That doesn't mean they don't contribute to success, but they're not a key that you can absolutely say, if you don't have one, you can't unlock the door. Mm -hmm. I think you can unlock the door of success without a business plan. Yeah. Well, let me, do, let's, let, I'm gonna flip the script just a little bit for the rest, for the final few minutes of the show together today. And I want I want you to put your advice hat on, all right? So, so this is one of the things you do all the time as a coach. I want you to talk to a listener right now. We've got listeners on this show who are startup brand spanking new, just like you were back in the day. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything. They they may or may not know their purpose. They don't know what business they want to go into. They just have this this burning desire to do something in business and they don't know what it is yet. And then on the other hand, we've got successful entrepreneurs that are doing six, eight, ten, nine, you know, whatever figures and they're doing great, billion billionaires, etc. But I want you to speak to that first group. I want you to say to them, if they were sitting right here what is your advice? They're sit, They're not moving. They're not doing anything. They're scared. How do you? What would you say? What does Rebecca tell them? Well, it's interesting because when I shared with you about this retreat in Sedona, Arizona, and I had that woman tell me you should be doing business coaching and like bag this your soul navigator holistic empowerment coach thing. I talked to my coach about it, and I was pretty upset because I'm like. I just paid all this money for this website. I taught myself how to do HTML code and now you want me to go use my name as a URL. And she said to me, you know what? You can go down this road and continue on with the holistic empowerment thing or you can do the business coaching thing, but either way, you're gonna find out what you're supposed to do. And so that's the key is taking action. So if you have an idea of Maybe this is the right direction for me. Maybe this is the right direction for me, but you're in procrastination and you're not taking action, you're never gonna get the answers. 
uh, over analyzing or psychoanalyzing or you know hyper analyzing whatever you want to call it is never going to get you any answers whatsoever so you just have to take a step in in whatever direction and take action and then you'll have the next answer and a lot of times i think people in the beginning they want to they want to have the whole lay of the land and that is not how entrepreneurship works it's all about the puzzle pieces it's all about moving them around being flexible like we did today yes and just enjoying that that's part of the ride that that i love because you could never you could never plan that and it makes it that much more exciting to be like okay i tried this it didn't work out it doesn't mean i'm not a failure it means i was shown that that's not the path for me and so also along that journey having self love and self forgiveness not seeing things as a failure nothing i don't actually believe in failure i only believe in feedback failure is feedback feedback is not totally. failure cuz you can either learn and move forward or you can stop. I think I, what I tell people is failure is a, is a stop along the journey to success. It is not, a, you, you don't quit. Failure is just a spot on the journey and you gotta get to success. What else would you say, just final parting comments, words of advice, et cetera, to entrepreneurs who want to be successful? I really believe and I've seen within my own life and also within a lot of my clients' lives is it really does come down to your relationship with yourself. One of the greatest compliments I've ever received was uh, a seven-figure entrepreneur that I work with in the Baltimore area that she she runs like all the marketing for all the different liquor companies in in DC, Virginia and Maryland. And her husband contacted me. I still get shivers when I tell this. Her husband contacted me and he said, "Rebecca, I wanted to let you know that your work with my wife has a presence in our home." And so just looking at how the effect of my work with his wife was affecting their family for the better was such a beautiful compliment. But it really does begin and I I just I'm using that as an example because I can see the difference of how she was when we first started working together, couldn't leave her phone, didn't have any time to herself, felt like, you know, she couldn't do anything and that's not why you become an entrepreneur. You become an entrepreneur to have more freedom. and then witnessing how that evolved for her very quickly to taking one day off a week and being totally unplugged. And so again, it really comes down to that relationship that you have with yourself. But if you think about what does that mean? Well, it means how well are you taking care of yourself? Would you treat your children the way that you treat yourself? And that energy and that foundation will literally reverberate into every other area of your life because if you can't treat yourself excellently how are you going to treat your team members and then they're going to be left feeling like crap and at the end of the day in your business people will not remember everything you said or did for them but they will always remember how you made them feel and so that's one of my driving factors is how do i show up for myself and how do i show up in the world with other people with friends with clients with family and how do i want to leave them feeling yeah i i think that piece of advice is so often overlooked and not heard and i'm glad that you said it because people want people remember how you made them feel as employees uh they're going to stick with you if they feel good uh they may be excellent at their job they 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 perform well but they'll quit if they don't feel appreciated they don't feel uh trusted and empowered and i think as an entrepreneur we have to remember that we got to make our employees our people that we work with feel a certain way and it's not about touchy feely you know being you know playing that stupid game and the pc you know like it's actually been legitimately authentically real with people and making them feel mm-hmm. good so how could how could people get in touch with you i know they've listened to the show now and they're like this lady's pretty awesome i need to get in touch <laughs> how would they get in touch like we talked about instagram at the beginning what's your instagram yeah so handle? instagram is rebecca satori and Spell that because I, I want yeah, everybody to be able to find it. It's R E B E C C A S A T O R I, and same for the website Rebecca Satori dot com. All right, just like it sounds, Rebecca Satori dot com or Rebecca Satori on Instagram. Any other ways to get in touch with you, or are those the main ways to? to yeah, engage? or if people want to email me directly, Rebecca at Rebecca Satori dot com. Well, I'm really glad that you're here. It's been a pleasure meeting you and getting to talk with you. Not only just last night over uh, uh, you know, when we had a couple drinks just talking about being here in Nashville, you enjoying the city for the first time, but it's really an honor to sit across from you and and see somebody who made big strides towards success 
on her own, put yourself in the right place, right time. So thank you for being here. It's, thank it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, everybody, I, I, uh, I love having these conversations with people like Rebecca, everybody who sits in that chair that I talk to about success. There's always a, a different flavor of the story. And so her story, she talks about how that, how, how that she made decisions to put herself in places that eventually led to that success. And one of the things we, we talked about early in the show is we talked about purpose. That first coach that changed her life was, hey, I'm going to teach you how to take your purpose and make it a business. And are you living in your purpose? Are you doing as an entrepreneur what you were put on this earth to do? And if not, you need to work towards that. And that's actually one of the things that I do every single day with my clients and my coaching platform is that I coach people how to exit their businesses without exiting, without selling them to a third party. And you may say, well, Jason, what does that have to do with purpose? Here's what has to do with it is that you didn't start your business to work 70 hours a week doing that thing. You started your business to provide you a freedom and control control over your time, money, and energy to do what you wanted to do. I mean, if you just wanted to work a lot, just go get a job but, and, and, and forget the stress and the debt and all the other things and the taxes that come with owning the business. But you started a business because you wanted something greater than that. And that's why I started the Exit Accelerator. It's a group coaching cohort live with me, it goes over 90 days. We meet eight times and I limit it only to 12 entrepreneurs at a time. So you really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with me in that experience. If you want to know more, go to exitwithoutexiting.com. That's exitwithoutexiting.com. You can read all about it. Well, thank you for tuning in on uh, this episode of The Root of All Success. It's been an honor to have Rebecca Satori here with us today. And I thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving a five-star review. Uh, you may or may not know this, but those reviews actually help us in more ways than just saying, oh, look, I got another five-star review. It actually helps get our show higher in the rankings so that other people like you can get access to it who may or may not have known about it ahead of time. So please go subscribe, leave a five-star review, and also, like I said, is make sure you look us up on YouTube at youtube.com slash The Real Jason Duncan. Uh, so I am The Real Jason Duncan, and Jesus is King. I'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with The Real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we invite you to visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Take charge of your business. Grow it from great to incredible. Join us again next time here on The Root of All Success. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>